My first year as the official DJ for the Golden State Warriors, and we made it to the playoffs for the first time in six years. What an exciting season to be a part of. One of the big He's an international star and hometown hero, just back from a gig in China, but you've heard him spinning at Oracle at all those Warrior games. DJ D Sharp is in the house. Welcome, D Sharp. Thanks for having me. How you doing? It's great to be here. I'm doing great. So tell us, I mean, when you go to a Warriors game, you're there every day, but you have to kind of make it different for the fans. What is it like being in there spinning, scratching, mixing? It's wonderful, man. Uh, the fans at Oracle are just like the best fans in the world. We all know this, right? And uh, it's a challenge to try to do different music all the time, but I try my best to incorporate all genres, mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, it's fun. But, but it's, a, it's fascinating to see what you do because the crowd really gets riled up when they hear your music and you scratching. Um, tell us exactly what, what that process is like. Well, for me, it's just, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Bull 3 style, but it's a competition um, where DJs mash up like three different styles of music. And that's kind of how I pattern what I do. So, you know, I just go in and I'll do like really fast, quick mixes mm -hmm. and just keep the attention of the people, you know? Right. What do the fans tell you and what do some of the players tell you after they've heard something that kind of gets the crowd pumping and, and Oracle becomes Roracle? Oh, man, it's crazy. Fans, you know what, man? The fans come up to me all the time and they request Mac Dre and E-40. Mm -hmm. Like, throw, <laughs> throw some E-40, throw some Mac Dre. Like, I get that all the time. And then the players... Um, they just want to hear, you know, what they listen to in their cars all the time, man. A lot of Drake, a lot of Two Chains, um, a lot of trap music, actually. Okay. You know, so I, I'm sure Kevin Durant's not going to uh, request Drake uh, in oh, the near yeah. future, <laughs> based on what happened <laughs> right, a couple exactly. of nights ago, where he kind of bumped into the rapper. Well, those guys, I think those guys, I think that was all jokes. Those, those guys are good friends. Yeah. What's yeah. your typical day like? Typical day is, you know, uh, oh getting ready to, uh, taking my kids to school and then coming home and uh, getting my music together for the next game. Um, I spend a lot of time online downloading music mm -hmm. um, and just making sure that, like I was saying earlier, that I have new music uh, and just different genres to play all the time. But um, so I, I get those together at home and then I drive down to the arena, set up and, you know, get there and get the crowd going. Yeah, and, and we're looking at some of this video. I, it, what fascinates me is that it, it's, it's, it seems like it's a lot different from mixing back in the, the 90s, late 80s. Totally. I mean, that was just records. You're, you're going to the, from the computer to all these digital equipment. Totally. Tell us about the differences now. Oh man, it's such a difference. Like, I mean, back in the day you were carrying like crates of records to parties and events. Now it's just your laptop and your, your, your headphones and, you know, a couple of, uh, couple of things of vinyl. But, I mean, now it's, it's just so, e it's so much easier. Like, you got DJ controllers mm -hmm. where all you got to do is plug up your computer. I seen MC Hammer the other night at an event, and he just had two iPads, and he was... Just doing his thing. <laughs> yeah. So technology has made it so that anyone can DJ. Now. Does that make it harder now that you have that technology? A lot more people can, are in that pool of talent is it harder to, to reach the pinnacle of your career? Um, or is it easier? I, well, for me, I think it's easier because I come from carrying the crates and DJing on turntables and learning how to put a needle together and actually shopping for records and stuff like that. So, you know, coming to where we are now with the technology and how um, you know, you go to iTunes and now everything, everybody has playlists, Spotify playlists. So you could go to Spotify and mm -hmm. get a playlist and that's your set. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. But for me, you know, it's just all about me putting that, that playlist together and actually mixing it. You know what I mean? We have a little bit of time left. What inspired you to kind of get into this business? What inspired me was, uh, first and foremost, was a movie called Beat Street. Um, there was a character in there, uh, Special K, I think his name was, mm -hmm. and he was a DJ. And um, when they, he was really shy, but when he got on the turntables, he was just a man. And like he turned the party around, and I just gravitated toward that. 
And then my mom's boyfriend at the time, he was a DJ. And I would go to his house and see all the records and stuff and the turntables and I would sneak and get on and act like I was scratching and doing stuff like that. So that's really what, you know, inspired it. Yeah, I, I think a lot of uh, Warrior fans are very jealous of, of the gig you have. So thank you so much for joining us here on the thank show you for and, having and, me. and much success in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. For dates, bookings, and a lot of very cool stuff, you can definitely check out uh, D Sharp's website, djdsharp.co. That's djdsharp.co. We'll be back with more Bass Sunday next week. Have a great day.